ISRO, after creating history with Chandrayaan-3, has launched Aditya L1 on September 2nd, just two weeks after landing the rover on the moon. The Aditya L1 mission is the first by ISRO to study the sun. Unlike Chandrayaan, where the payload landed on the moon's surface, Aditya L1 aims to send a spacecraft closer to the sun and study it for five years using the payloads installed on the spacecraft. This spacecraft will be positioned closer to the Earth compared to the sun. After the launch, the spacecraft is set to travel 15 lakh kilometers to reach Lagrange point L1. Once it reaches the L1 point, the spacecraft will be placed in a halo orbit. If you're not familiar with the concept of a halo orbit, it's nothing but an imaginary path around a hypothetical celestial object. Aditya L1 has successfully reached the L1 point. The spacecraft took four months to reach L1 point since its launch. Now positioned at L1, it will orbit in a halo orbit monitoring the sun and transmitting data to ISRO for the next five years. This isn't just a spacecraft, it also functions as a space observatory. Now, the question that might pop up in your mind is, what are these Lagrange points? Well, at these Lagrange points, the forces between two celestial objects are perfectly balanced. In simple terms, if we take the example of the L1 point, when you move from the L1 point towards the side facing the sun, the gravitational pull from the sun becomes stronger. Similarly, if you move towards the side facing the Earth, the gravitational pull from the Earth becomes stronger. If the spacecraft is positioned at the L1 point, since there is a balance between the forces, the spacecraft can remain stable without requiring much energy. Additionally, the spacecraft will stably revolve along with the Earth. Considering the Earth and the Sun, there are five Lagrange points. If you look at the screen, you can understand where these five Lagrange points are located. The reason for choosing L1 point among them is that, from this point, the spacecraft can observe the Sun and the Earth without any obstruction. Not only India, but other countries have also chosen this point for their space missions. Take for example, SOHO, Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. This was a joint mission by NASA and European Space Agency. Talking about Aditya L1 mission, what does it study about the Sun? Before we go there, let's quickly understand a little bit about our Sun. The Sun's diameter is about 109 times larger than the Earth's. Now, when it comes to the weight, if we compare Sun to Earth, the Sun's weight is more than 300,000 times greater. To give you an idea, you could fit around 1.3 million Earths inside the Sun. Just like the Earth has layers, such as core, outer core, mantle and crust, the Sun also has layers. The innermost layer is called as the core, and in the core, hydrogen atoms collide constantly, as a result, the nuclear fusion reactions takes place, and these reactions generate a lot of energy. This energy production is what gives us the light and the heat which we feel on the Earth. The temperature in the core reaches 15 million degrees Celsius. Outside the core, there are radiative zone and the connective zone. These two layers that come before reaching the surface of the Sun. Following these layers, there's another layer on the Sun's surface and it's called as photosphere. The Sun actually doesn't have a surface like the Earth. And this is because Sun is a big giant gaseous star. It's primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. Moving away from the core, the temperature gradually decreases. And at photosphere, the temperature is about 5500 Celsius. Above the photosphere, there is a layer called the chromosphere, where temperatures can range from approximately 6000 to 20,000 degrees Celsius. The outermost layer of the Sun is called the corona. What's fascinating here is that, despite the considerable distance from the core, the temperature at this region can range between 1 million to 3 million Celsius. Technically, when we move away from the heat source, the temperature should drop. But in the case of corona layer, when compared to photosphere, it is much hotter. And no one understands why. This is called as the coronal heating problem. Many scientists have put together various theories on why this could be happening, but no one were able to provide a definite answer on why this is happening. We should wait and see if Aditya L1 could provide any answers here. When we observe the sun from our planet, what we see is the photosphere layer. However, during a solar eclipse, when the sun is blocked, we witness a reddish glow, which is a chromosphere layer. In a total solar eclipse, only the corona layer is visible, appearing as a faint yellow layer. One of the objectives of Aditya L1 mission is to study the outer layers of the sun, including the photosphere, chromosphere, and the corona. Aditya L1 is equipped with seven scientific instruments, commonly referred to as payloads. I will now provide you with a detailed explanation of these payloads. First one is the Visible Emission Line Coronagraph, short form VELC. This instrument is dedicated to studying the corona layer and measuring coronal mass ejections. 
Second one, the Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope, short form SUIT. This instrument captures the images of photosphere and chromosphere. The third one is the Solar Low Energy X-ray Spectrometer, short form SOLEXUS. Fourth one, the High Energy L1 Orbiting X-ray Spectrometer, short form HELIOS. These two instruments study the X-rays emitted by the Sun. Fifth, the Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiment, short form ASPECTS. Sixth, the Plasma Analyzer Package for Aditya, short form PAPA. These two instruments study the solar wind. The last one is the Magnetometer, short form MAG. This instrument measures the magnetic fields present at the L1 point. From our sun, apart from the heat and the visible light, various other forms of radiations are also released and these are very harmful to humans. When I mean radiation, it could be ultraviolet rays, X-rays, gamma rays, infrared rays and additionally, sun also emits solar winds, solar flares, coronal mass ejections. Now these are the particle emissions. So these particle emissions are usually repelled by our Earth's magnetic field and Earth's atmosphere filters all these radiations. To study these, we have to send the spacecraft into the space. And that is the reason why ISRO has chosen to send a spacecraft to L1 point. And on January 6th, Aditya L1 has reached the L1 point and settled into a stable orbit. This marks ISRO's first significant achievement of 2023 for our country.